What does one say to an ancient Nephilim ghost? I suppose you start with... Use the force. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What's going on, YouTube? It's Filthy, and we're back with another video. Will Season 4 of Diablo 4 bring players back to the game? Let me know. Are you planning on coming back? I'm going to talk through the reasons why I abandoned Diablo 4 very, very briefly. I'm going to talk a little bit about what's coming in this next patch in PTR. Uh, and whether I'm excited, whether I'm going to return, and I think ultimately I will. I think it's worthwhile giving the game another chance. But let me know, are you done with this game? Has it just annoyed you too much? Or are you kind of excited for this next patch cycle? Before we do get going, as always, guys, a thumbs up brightens my day. So I quit this game probably about nine months ago. I have played little bits of it since then, but not terribly much. What really pissed me off was I hated level scaling, it just made the game feel pretty awful and not like an ARPG. Uh, I was really hacked off with just the litany of crowd control that was just ever. I just felt like I was constantly being crowd controlled in World Tier 3 and 4, didn't enjoy playing it. And then thirdly, the stash space being laughably small, there being so many aspects to keep, so many gear pieces to keep, uh, and just generally finding loot uh, was not rewarding. Now, they're obviously not the, the only things that were, were bugging me about the game. Nightmare Dungeons, I thought were really badly designed. The backtracking was horrific. Uh, Helltides, whilst initially fun, became quite repetitive pretty fast. Same for the world bosses, really good fun to do them the first couple of times, but after that, got quite boring. And ultimately, I'm a player who likes finding loot. I'm a loot-driven ARPG fan, and the loot in this game, initially at launch, uh, frankly was shit, because the affixes were crap, they were confusing or co overly complicated. The legendary system, actually, whilst it offered lots of flexibility with the occultist and the imprinting, kind of made feeling every single legendary, finding every single legendary in the game exactly the same. You had to pick up every single one, you didn't know what it was, you were hoping it rolled well on its on its aspect and then you had to go and imprint it on a better base so you kind of were duty bound to pick up anything that could potentially be a base and anything that had a legendary power and there was so much crap gear uh, involved in that that ultimately the game wasn't fun. I started calling it Diablo Snore because the thought of getting to level 100 and playing through it and upgrading everything just bored me to absolute tears so I, I basically said goodbye uh, and haven't really been back. Now, this patch cycle that they have announced did actually make me come back and have a look at the game. I have played through a good chunk of Season 3 now, uh, and I can obviously see there have been pretty big changes in the game already, and it was pr I probably had a better time than I thought I would do. But we know that we're getting a PTR starting in a few days' time. We know that there's going to be a lot of things changing. I think it sounds pretty exciting in terms of what is going to get changed. So revamping is number one, the gear. So the affixes, there's a big affix pass. The affixes are going to be more powerful. There's going to be fewer of them. They're going to be less conditional. Loot is therefore going to be more impactful. You're going to get less drops, but they're going to be better quality. That means we're not going to be still sifting through stuff. There's still no loot filter coming, unfortunately, but it does make it sound like base gear uh, is going to be better to find. We're also getting more unique items in terms of the more ones added to the game. We're going to get more unique dropping in the game. Uh, ultimately, we're going to pick up less trash because, again, something that bugs me is when you go from World Tier 2 to 3, you have to swap out all of your gear to Sacred, and then going from 3 to 4, you have to swap all of your gear out with Ancestral. I personally think that's a stupid system. Um, but at least now we're only going to get Sacred in World Tier 3, we're only going to get Ancestral in World Tier 4, so there'll be less kind of stuff on the ground that is crap that you don't want to pick up. Also changing in the gear is the Occultist and the Codex, and the Codex of Power, so now when we salvage legendary items it will just upgrade the Codex, so whereas the Codex just used to put on the minimum roll for your legendary power, you kind of collect that up as you go, World Tier 4 will offer the best possible affixes and that way whenever you come to imprint something you're always going to be doing it with maximum power once you've played enough and found the items that seems to me to be a better system because again ultimately once you've got the max aspects for your build if you so wish you can then just basically salvage any legendary you get and you're not really that bothered about looking at it um, so I think that's a pretty good change and also quite quite big is they've now opened up trade so that we can now trade uh, legendary items and I think uniques as well which is going to be pretty good the ubers you won't be able to trade but I think that potentially 
opens up some interesting things that you can do. How the hell are you going to trade? I don't know because it looks like the multiplayer and the group finding and the chat is still crap, but at least the option is there. Uh, number two coming with the game is a really big crafting system actually. They've obviously looked I think at last epoch and seen just how uh, successful that's been, how the crafting system is really well handled in that game. I'm not a big craft guy but it does look like you're going to have to be if you want to play Diablo 4. So the theory is, is you find affixes that are going to be better, like greater affixes that have got 50% increase on them. You're then going to go through this process of upgrading your gear very slowly, working in the new endgame system that they've got. Um, so I think that's going to be interesting to do. It sounds like there's going to be impact on builds like extra projectiles, extra radius and stuff like that. That's kind of what we want. We want a bit more build diversity and variety at the end of the game so, so i do think that's potentially a reason to get to like 100 and then grind out all of your gear upgrades if they're going to be impactful if it's going to change how the game plays i think that could be pretty good how that pans out in real life how hard or easy it is to get really good godly gear we'll have to see uh, a third big change they're making is XP and class balancing. So XP in general is going to go up a lot. So it's going to be much easier to get to 100. That's very important because the new endgame content that starts roughly at monster tier level 100 is going to be quite important to get to. There's a lot of class adjustment changes. A lot of skills have been buffed. They've taken a lot of the conditional stuff away, which is going to be good. But I'm particularly interested in two things, which is number one, the Necromancer with minions, because minions uh, are terrible in this game. I, Necromancer is my favourite class in all ARPGs, and playing it in Diablo 4 was not rewarding, because the minions sucked. And I also find it quite weird that there's no teleport skill really for the, for the Necro. But anyway, minions have been buffed, so that's going to be interesting to play through. Hopefully they are actually really good. And then secondly, I want to try this new Wizard with the Frozen Orb, where it automatically casts out the Conjurations and then they fire Frozen Orbs. Too. That looks fun. That looks like a fun build uh, to play. So hopefully speaking, class power is going up, XP is going up, and then we can basically get to 100 faster and then start doing some of the end game stuff. So number four, what they're adding is, is a new Greater Rift system. It's called the Pit, but it is basically Greater Rifts from Diablo 3. Hallelujah. Why this was not in the game at launch is absolutely baffling. Greater Rifts and Rifts from Diablo 3 are the best feature of that game. That is what has kept people playing that game for years. The random mapping, um, instead of it being static fixed content, variable monsters, variable loadouts, variable layouts, is just what gives it its en almost endless replayability. So I think it's mad that it has now taken till Season 4 to get this added. I would like it really a lot if they'd made it so that you could just jump in at level one and just start playing. And if you want to level all the way through doing this and thus ignore level scaling, that would have been really cool. But it looks like it's going to start at monster level 100. So you're probably going to need a pretty fleshed out character to even enter into this. That worries me a little bit because if the game isn't fun enough to play up until you get to the pit, then I think some people will quit. So again, we'll have to sort of play the PTR, see how long it takes to level, see how much fun it is. But overall, of course, adding a greater rift system to me as a D3 player, uh, it's going to be pretty, pretty exciting. Uh, number five, they've made Helltides better. They're porting over the event from season two uh, with the with the vampiric stuff. So you'll go in the Helltide. There's more monsters in there, better density. You've got a meter that builds up and once the meter is full, it spawns an event and it's just going to be more rewarding to play. And you can now do Helltide on World Tier 1 and 2, which is going to be good again for leveling because that's going to give you something to mix up rather than just running the same couple of dungeons over and over again, uh, which is going to be pretty good. Number six, of course, we're going to get a season theme on top. Who knows what that's going to be? I guess at this point, hopefully it's either another kind of system that we can use to level or it's something like the overworld system from season three whereby there is things in the overworld in general that you can interact with uh, and do some fun stuff but overall the patch i think takes things in a very positive direction that's without adding a season theme season theme power season theme mechanics activities quest line story so overall I'm quite excited to play the PTR when it comes out in a few days' time. I'm quite excited to play Season 4. I think I will get to level 100, and I will try this you know, piss Greater Rift system out. So I think this patch, 
puts the game into a very good place. I'm pleased we're going to test some of it. Um, I'm worried in traditional Blizzard style that on PCR we'll find some busted stuff, they'll nerf it into the ground, and we'll kind of have to see how the land lies at the end of the patch cycle uh, for the game going live. But ultimately, I think it is a good time to come back. It's roughly been not too far off a year, and the game does look like it's going to be in a better spot and certainly more fun to play. So I'm planning on coming back. Let me know if you are too. I've been the Filthy Casual. Take it easy, guys. Peace.